blockchain, civil net. Hello, CivilNet's guest today is the U.S. Ambassador to Armenia, Lynn Tracy. Thank you, Ambassador, for accepting our invitation. Armenian-American relations are deep and comprehensive. We'll talk about them in general and then go into details and specific questions. It's been a year since Armenia's new parliament was formed after snap elections and a year and a half since we've had a new government. Armenia is currently undergoing complex internal transformations. How would you assess this? How does the U.S. assess those reforms, and are they viewed as successful? Well, uh, we're very happy, of course, with the state of uh, U.S.-Armenia relations. Historically, relations have been uh, very good, uh, but uh, what we've seen is that uh, in the last year and a half, uh, new opportunities have uh, been uh, coming to the forefront uh, with uh, this new government. And so one of the things that we're very happy about is uh, that we have been able to secure additional assistance for Armenia, a 40% increase um, from 2018 to 2019. And uh, we intend to use those resources uh, to help support the government's reform agenda. And if I may, I'll just highlight a few areas that uh, we're focusing on where I think we see the government uh, uh, moving out very quickly, uh, and that is in the uh, justice sector. So we will be assisting on anti-corruption efforts with uh, standing up an anti-corruption court uh, and an anti-corruption committee. But we have other uh, uh, areas that we're working, that we've been working in, where we're expanding our efforts. Uh, tourism, uh, USAID has been very active in this space. And I just saw um, a report that uh, tourism is up by 14% uh, from 2018 to 2019. So I think this is a place of real promise for us to work together. Agribusiness is another place where we have been active. We're going to continue to work. I was just in Megri in September and I met some of the farmers who we're working with who with some extra help, uh, some modest investments in their businesses, uh, they're reporting uh, that they are more profitable uh, and that they are intending to stay uh, in Armenia uh, and remain a part of the, the business life here. And my last uh, point on this uh, is just that I have had the chance to travel uh, twice to Megri in the last couple of months, uh, once uh, to Vyatzor. Uh, so I've been up and down this road a good bit. And you know, what I'm seeing is uh, an example of the government delivering uh, uh, a service that people care about. Uh, there is some very significant road uh, reconstruction work that's happening. It's happening at a very uh, quick pace. I've been able to see that. And you know, reforms come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. And I think this uh, effort we're seeing on the roads is one example of where the government is really delivering. Ambassador, you brought up interesting and enlightening facts. I would like to elaborate a bit more on the anti-corruption courts and the reforms in the justice sector in general and U.S. assistance. We've heard discussions about transitional justice, which is another key area that, if I'm not mistaken, the U.S. supports in Armenia. What do these anti-corruption courts mean? What is transitional justice? What's the right way to implement transitional justice here? And how will the U.S. contribute to the process? Well, with respect to our anti-corruption efforts, uh, the uh, courts uh, and the committee are really looking at uh, the, the high levels, uh, senior levels of government, uh, and to ensure that uh, standards of uh, integrity are met uh, and to ensure that if there are cases involving senior level uh, uh, officials that uh, there's a place to go and follow up on those uh, concerns. You know, the other area that we uh, are focusing on are just uh, the kinds of trainings uh, for the police, for judges, uh, for others in the, uh, the justice sector uh, that help to get at the kind of institutional changes that are necessary uh, to support uh, the vision that uh, this government has for uh, a very high level of integrity 
uh, and accountability. Uh, Thank you. In addition to the legal component, there is also a serious economic context and potential between the U.S. and Armenia with regards to the energy sector. We have certain U.S. organizations present in Armenia's energy sector, which is one of the more vulnerable sectors, taking into account the fact that we get our natural energy supply from one source, and this is also used as a political tool. What plans and projects does the U.S. have in Armenia's energy sector in particular? Well, uh, first of all, with respect to the uh, the energy market. One area that we have been working in, we will continue to work in, uh, is the electricity market between Armenia and Georgia. Uh, there, uh, a lot of our work is uh, in the regulatory side, but this is very important because uh, what we're finding is that through uh, good regulation uh, practices, uh, we can help make this market more efficient. And of course, uh, hydropower is another source of, of energy for Armenia. Uh, this is another place that we're engaged, uh, particularly though looking at questions of water depletion in the Ararat Valley uh, to make sure that, uh, that water resources are uh, used to their best potential. <laughs> Ambassador. The previous ambassador to Armenia, Richard Mills, had stated that the energy sector is of great interest to the U.S., the expectations of potential investments reaching billions of dollars. But he urged that there should be equal opportunities in the sector for all interested investors. Are these equal investment opportunities now available in Armenia, and should we be expecting new American investments in this sphere? Uh, in the in the energy sector, or just in general, as an investment opportunity. In, in energy sector. In special. energy sector. Uh, in the energy sector, I mean, certainly another area that uh, we're looking at is in the potential that renewable um, uh, energy resources might present. Uh, of course, there's solar, uh, even wind, uh, and uh, we are very happy to uh, promote uh, Armenia as uh, a place that uh, is good for American companies to look at. Uh, but this is still an area that I think is in its early stages for investment opportunities for American companies. But I do want to highlight that uh, uh, Global Contour, uh, an American company, uh, is very heavily invested in the hydropower sector. It is the largest American investment in Armenia. Uh, and uh, I had the chance to visit the Tatev plant uh, in September. I was struck by the top class uh, team of people that is working there. Uh, and so there may be other opportunities in the hydropower sector uh, because I think uh, Contra Global is demonstrating uh, that uh, it's possible for an American company to be successful there. So at the moment, we cannot say that there are some specific programs in U.S. investment projects in Armenia's energy sector. Uh, not beyond the ones we've just talked about. You mentioned Armenia-Georgia energy cooperation and that the U.S. supports it and has taken some actions towards this. But for Armenia, cooperation with Iran in terms of energy is very important. And we know about U.S.-Iran relations, which are a restraining factor from Armenian-Iranian cooperation viewpoints. Nonetheless, Iran is very important for Armenia in terms of diversifying its energy sector and limiting its dependence. So, what is your stance, the U.S. stance, on Armenia-Iran relations, especially cooperation in the energy sphere? Does the U.S. understand Iran's importance to Armenia in this sector? Uh, so we understand uh, very clearly uh, the uh, place that Iran represents uh, for Armenia uh, in terms of a second, one of two op open borders, uh, as well as the fact that uh, there is this uh, gas electricity swap arrangement. Uh, we have um, understood this for quite some time. Uh, and uh, I think our main concern with uh, Iran uh, is not um, uh, in the space where there is legitimate trading relationships uh, taking place, but it's really about Iran's uh, support uh, for 
uh, terrorist entities, uh, government-supported uh, terrorist entities. Uh, but uh, that's a very specific and focused um, uh, area. Outside of that, uh, there's plenty of scope for uh, the, the trade that is taking place between Iran and Armenia that we have no quarrel with. Interesting. So if Armenia and Iran expand their economic and financial cooperation in a legitimate way, that's not a cause of concern? No, not at all. Our, our concern is, is very targeted and focused on uh, a few key entities that are government entities in some case, Iranian government entities, and the, the concern is uh, these entities and their connection to terrorist activities. Outside of that, as I said, I think there's, we understand the, the Iran-Armenia relationship and the, the trading relationship that's taking place. In that case, how would you comment on the fact that, if I'm not mistaken, two Armenian companies that trade with Iran said they were included in the sanctions list of the U.S. Treasury? Uh, you know, I uh, don't know that I want to go into a lot of detail here, but uh, when these uh, um, designations are made, uh, they only come after a great deal of due diligence of looking behind the scenes uh, and checking connections. Uh, and so uh, it's a very, very careful process that we go through. Um, as I said, I don't want to comment on these two particular companies, but just to say that uh, the Treasury Department uh, carries out a very, very careful uh, review before it takes steps such as this. Thank you. The next issue I'd like us to touch upon concerns the second largest American investment in Armenia, the Amosar mine, the operations of which are halted at the moment and there is a lot of ambiguity around it. What is the outlook of the U.S. government on this issue? Is this process going to take a while? Are you discussing this with the Armenian government? What are the messages that you are sending to the Armenian authorities? Uh, well, the main message that I have been uh, sending and discussing uh, with the government uh, since my arrival has been the importance of uh, fair treatment uh, for uh, uh, the Lydian company and this project at Amosar, uh, and the importance of uh, uh, transparent uh, and predictable uh, rules, a predictable decision-making process, uh, because uh, this is the kind of uh, situation that other investors are going to watch. They're going to watch how is uh, a foreign investor treated, is that investor treated uh, with uh, um, uh, transparency, uh, with a sense of fairness. Does the uncertainty around Amosar and the stagnation of the process have a negative consequence on potential investors? Well, as I said, I think it is uh, certainly a uh, case that investors will look at and examine uh, and make their determinations about uh, what that might mean for, for their investment decisions in Armenia. Ambassador, the next question also concerns the U.S. and its interests. There has been a lot of rumors in Russian and Armenian media about biological laboratories which were upgraded with the U.S. support, specifically with support from the Pentagon or the State Department. And Russia sees some issues here. During the recent visit of Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov to Armenia, it was mentioned that there is a memorandum of understanding to be signed, which will allow Russian experts to have access to those labs to see what's going on inside. What do you think about this? How does the U.S. view this issue? Well, uh, we're very proud of the cooperation that we've had with the government of Armenia since 2008 uh, with respect to uh, biological uh, security. Uh, and uh, the labs that are in question, these are Armenian labs uh, that are run by Armenian professionals uh, and under the control of the Armenian government. I think that we've been very transparent uh, about this cooperation, uh, but uh, Armenia is a sovereign 
uh, nation. This is a sovereign government, and I think it's uh, uh, Armenia's decision about how to manage the labs. Armenian society in the Armenian diaspora are closely following what's happening in the U.S. Congress in connection to the process on the resolution recognizing the Armenian genocide. Today we learned that the resolution was blocked by one of the senators. How would you comment on this? Why did the House of Representatives pass it and the Senate block it? Is this linked to Erdogan's visit to the U.S.? Is this something that can be explained in the context of U.S.-Turkey relations? Well, first of all, let me just uh, uh, say that I've had many Armenians tell me how important uh, this House resolution uh, on genocide uh, uh, has been to them, how important this, this uh, resolution is. Historic resolution. And uh, uh, I uh, respect that and I understand that. Uh, but. Uh, as I stated at my confirmation hearing, and I have uh, been asked about this a number of times since I've been here, um, uh, administrations, uh, both this administration as well as prior administrations, uh, have uh, acknowledged uh, the historical facts of 1915, uh, the mass atrocities and killings, uh, as a very uh, horrible, uh, terrible event of the 20th century, one of the worst uh, events of the 20th century. And that statement is made uh, uh, every year uh, on Remembrance Day uh, so that we don't forget. Uh, and it happens uh, regardless of what is happening uh, in the context of other relationships that we have with other countries, including Turkey. My question was the following, Ambassador, if I may repeat it. Was the blocking of the resolution in the Senate preconditioned by Erdogan's visit because the U.S. government didn't want to ruin relations with Turkey? Well, uh, Congress is an independent branch of government uh, and makes its decisions. Uh, so uh, I'm not... Uh, um, privy to all of the uh, background on why uh, a decision may have been taken uh, at this point in time uh, by the Senate. Uh, um, and I think that uh, this is a process that is still unfolding. Uh, so I think we should wait and continue to see uh, um, what uh, the process, uh, where the process goes uh, in Congress. Thank you, Ambassador, for the interesting interview. My guest today was the U.S. Ambassador to Armenia, Lynn Tracy.